We are now going to be talking about some of the sections which are commonly tested and seen, but which are a little bit more challenging. Now, guys, again, as always, concentrate on the following. So you must concentrate on knowing the following. Definition, if there is a definition. Timing, value, and any other special rule. You need to be able to discuss under those headings, the different sections. So the first one we're talking about will be rentals and installment credit agreements. And we're going to start specifically with installment credit agreements. Now, installment credit agreements, is a, there's a definition for that in Section 1 of the VAT Act. Now, this has been asked in SACA RTC and SACA APC quite recently as well. So, it is an important section. It's also a common section in reality. Now, what is an installment credit agreement? The VAT Act in Section 1, in this definition, basically gives us two distinct situations. The first one is a suspensive sale agreement. And the second one is if you have a finance lease. Typically, suspensive sale agreements and finance leases are both considered installment credit agreements. What is a suspensive sale agreement? A suspensive sale agreement is where I sell you something today and I say pay me off over the next three years. And only at the end of the three years do you become the actual owner of it. So it's basically just paying it off over a period. Finance lease is something that you've previously encountered. And I'm sure in other subjects like financial accounting. But that is where I say to you... All right, here's a machine. You can lease the machine. Um, it's a useful life of six years, let's say. You can lease it for the full six years or for five years, the majority of its useful life. You'll pay me an amount which is basically more than its cost. You're renting it from me, but it's a bit more permanent than an operating lease. Now, what they tell us in the definition is they just give us the definition of these things, and you need to work through this in detail on the act. It says it applies to movable goods, machinery, or plant. And then it says you're not in movable goods, and I want you to just understand what that means. I want you to make a note. Does not apply to fixed property, but it does apply to fixed machinery or plant. So when I'm talking about immovable goods, I want you to understand I'm talking about fixed property there, but it does apply to immovable machinery. So you've got a massive machine in a factory that's bolted or uh, put into a foundation, that's basically immovable, but it still applies to that. Right, so both of these, when they talk about that, it does not apply to fixed properties like buildings and land. That's the most important. So I'm going to just write it again here. Does, or oh, let me actually say it like this. Or this fixed property over here, buildings or land and buildings. All right. So these are the requirements for a suspensive sale agreement. It must apply to movable goods, machinery or plant, movable or immovable. It must be sold for an amount which is payable in installments or a future date. It will include finance charges. The total payment exceeds the cash value of the supply. Okay, so what does that mean? It means here, let's say I want to, I'm just thumb sucking an amount, let's say I want to buy an asset. The cash cost of this asset is Give me one second. The cash cost of this asset is 216,000 rands. That 216,000 will comprise of 28174 VAT. Right, so it's just an all VAT that's calculated. And the difference is the X VAT amount 187,826 X VAT. Now, I'll go and I buy this under a suspensive sale agreement. So in terms of the suspensive sale agreement, I'll say, for 36 months, pay 10,000 rands 
per month. So this is what the suspense of sale agreement says. It says you want to buy this asset? To do that, you must pay 10,000 rands per month over 36 months. So what is my total payment going to be? My total payment is going to be 10,000 rands times 36 months, so 360,000. So that 360,000, can you see, is more than the 216,000. So what is that total cost? What is it going to be comprised of? It's going to be comprised of the following. It will be comprised of the X VAT amount, the VAT amount, and those will be exactly the same still. 187, 826, and the VAT, for now, I just want you to bear with me, you'll see it is the same. And that difference there is the finance charges or the interest. Right, so 144,000 rands is finance. So, let's see if this will meet a requirement. So, I, s I sell an asset that has a cash cost of 216,000 rands. I sell it to you for 36 months. You have to pay it off 10,000 rands a month. So, does it apply to movable goods? Yes. It's sold for an amount payable in installments or at a future date? Yes, every month you're paying 10,000 rands. It includes finance charges? Yes. It exceeds the cash value of the supply? This is the cash value. This is the total, so yes it does. And then, the purchaser does not become the owner when the goods are delivered, and goods may be returned to the seller if purchaser fails to comply. So I say to you, you will only be the owner after 36 months, not immediately, and if you don't pay, I take the goods back. Right, then that will be a suspense of sale agreement. So if it meets all those requirements, it will be an installment credit agreement. Finance lease, same story, plus removal goods, machinery or plant, move or immovable, not fixed property. The rent is payable in installments in future, it includes finance charges, the total payment exceeds the cash value. The lessee may use it for 12 months or more and accepts the full risk of ownership. So I say to you, you can use this asset, but if it blows up, you are going to have to pay for it. Or the lessor, me, accepts the full risk of destruction and loss and insurance, and you accept the maintenance and repair. So I say to you, here's a machine, you can use it. If it blows up, I will pay for it. But you must repair it, and you must also maintain it. Right, then it is a, f a finance lease, which is an installment credit agreement. So what happens if it's an installment credit agreement? Now, I'm going to use this example I just gave you. So I say to you, you want to buy this asset. You're going to pay, it for 36 months, you're going to pay 10,000 rands a month. So what is, what are the va what's the bad question here? Remember, we have to discuss the definition which we did. We need to discuss the timing. Right, so what is the timing? So this is the question that you have to ask yourself. Are you going to calculate VAT every single month when you pay? Right, and am I, the person who you are, uh, the seller or the lessor, am I going to calculate output tax every month? So this is what it tells us. The installment credit agreement says there's a special timing rule and a value rule. The timing rule says you calculate it on the earlier of delivery or payment. Right, so if I deliver that machine to you today, but I start paying in a month, or you start paying in a month, today, the earlier of it. So that's the timing rule. And what is the value rule? So on what value do we calculate the VAT? Do we calculate it on that X VAT amount? Do we calculate it on the total? What is it? They tell you that the VAT must be calculated on the cash value. And the cash value excludes finance charges. What is the cash value, guys? The cash value is this amount that you would pay excluding VAT. Right, so the cash value. So you don't calculate on that finance charges. And we also know you shouldn't because finance charges are financial services which are exempt. Rentals is different. A rental is when it is... This is when it does not meet the definition of installment credit agreement. Right, so rental. So for example, I say to you, every month you pay me 50 rands to rent this printer for as long as you need it. Okay, so if you stop paying, you give it back immediately. Right, timing and value rules. There's a special timing rule 
But the value rule is the normal rule. The special timing rule, section 93A says, the timing is the earlier of when, it be, uh, when rent becomes due or when payment is received. So if I say to you, every month you must pay on the 1st, but then you only pay on the 10th, the 1st is when the timing takes place. I will raise output tax, you will claim input tax. The value rule says, there's no special value rule, it just says whatever the amount is that is charged in money, that is what it is calculated on.